wealth, fame, and power. The pirate king, Goldie Roger, was able to acquire all three of these English words. However, during his travels, one question does remain. Did Roger ever become hungry enough to eat a devil fruit? Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we are here to ask the very important question of did our illustrious and mustachious pirate king possess a devil fruit? And I guess I will say right off the bat that the affirmative argument for this case is not particularly popular within the online fan base. In fact, I did a poll asking people whether or not they thought Roger was a fruit user and the results were, uh, they were a little bit one-sided to say the least. That's all right though, because One Piece is not a democracy. It is a one-man manga dictatorship. And as such, if Oda wanted Roger to be a fruit user, well, then that's what they're getting. So we are going to be exploring that particular possibility. Before any of that though, it's time for a quick round of gold, silver, or scopper. A very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. Behind this door stands a famed figure of the Roger Pirates, either Goldie Roger, Silver's Rayleigh, or Scopper Gabon. And it is going to be your job to guess which one of them it is. And should you guess incorrectly, then your gold standard punishment will be to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, which will also result in a consistent injection of One Piece culture straight into the veins of your YouTube feed. And if you are correct, then you will get a high five from Child Shanks and a withering glare from Child Buggy. But who will be behind the door, gold, silver, or Scopper? Make your decision now and we shall reveal the answer in three, two, one, and bam, it is Silver's Rayleigh. So if you picked Goldie Roger or Scopa Gabon, then you know the thing to do, and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet, welcome. But to get into this Roger fruit business, we're going to run into a lot of hurdles with this topic, metaphorical hurdles that is, many of which take the form of questions, ever so many questions. One very basic one being, if Roger was a fruit user, then why don't we know that by now? And the answer to such an inquiry is very simple, well, Roger doesn't want us to know yet. I mean, I don't think it's completely out of the question to keep one of the most mysterious characters in the series shrouded in, uh, what's the word? Mystery. Because even 1,000 chapters in, we still know shockingly little about Roger in general, and we've only had the briefest of glimpses into his journey. So most of these hodl questions are going to have very easy Oda-based answers, all but one that is. There is a particular scene in the series that makes very little sense, in general really, but even more so if Roger were to be a fruit user. And this occurs very early on during chapter 19, when Shanks and Buggy encounter a devil fruit for the first time. The two of them speak of the subject as if it was some sort of mythical existence. That's not what gets to me most though. It's actually the very next scene where an adult member of the Roger Pirate states the following. Maybe those tales about the devil fruits were lies, which comes in response to Buggy pretending to eat the devil fruit and then having nothing whatsoever happening to him. But this tiny, tiny statement is actually a big, big problem for the Roger Devil Fruit camp because if Roger or indeed any of his crew were to be fruit users, then there would surely be no speculation about the validity of Devil Fruits, as each and every crew member would have viewed these powers firsthand. As it is though, I should say that this is not just an issue when examining Roger individually, but it also verges on being a plot hole in the entirety of One Piece. The primary issue being that the Roger Pirates reached the end of the Grand Line before Buggy and Shanks were even born, or at the very least they did so in the exact same year. Buggy and Shanks are both 39 years old post time skip, and the Roger Pirates reached Lodestar Island also 39 years ago. Which legitimately does make me wonder if they've both been part of the and say we're like little babby men, but uh, that's a video for another time. The greater point being that by the time you've sailed through the Grand Line and the New World, these allegedly adult members of the Roger Pirates would have undoubtedly encountered Devil Fruit users, whether that's pirates like the Rocks or Marines like Sengoku, they were fairly common, especially in the New World. The only reason why this may not have been the case is if Devil Fruits are a relatively recent addition to the world, but they're definitely not. And we know thanks primarily to Toki that they have existed for hundreds and hundreds of years. So in the end, yes, this Buggy and Shanks flashback is a major piece of evidence against Roger having a fruit, but it also makes very little sense within the context of the entire series. And that alone should not be used as a reason to dismiss the idea, because that might just be a byproduct of super early One Piece before Oda had really solidified the journey of the Roger Pirates. So let's accept that it's definitely possible, which would then immediately give way to a new question being, well, what kind of devil fruit might Roger have used? And to this, there are two very standard answers, both of which I honestly don't like, but we do need to bring them up, and the first of which is Luffy's devil fruit, the Gomu Gomu no Mi. Which, look, yeah, it's it's pretty painfully narratively appropriate. At this stage in the series, the parallels between Luffy and Roger are so strong that I could certainly see Oda doing this. I mean, I still remember when it was first revealed that Roger was one of the previous owners of Luffy's straw hat, and I definitely had a quite similar reaction then that I would have to finding out that he was the previous user of the Gomu Gomu no Mi. That reaction being not good. It felt very, I mean, I don't know how to put this, but it felt very 
understand it. Like instead of expanding the One Piece world, it had actually shrunk it. And so I think that revealing that Roger was the former user of the Gomu Gomu no Mi would have a similar, if not worse effect. But on some levels, it definitely does work, particularly with the idea of inherited will, something that Devil Fruits are certainly not immune from. We have examples of say Sabo inheriting the will of Ace by consuming his former fruit. And given that Luffy is pursuing the dreams and desires of Roger, it's very much in keeping with, well, what One Piece is. Plus it could also make some retrospective sense with Shanks' time in East Blue. He recognized his captain's fruit, took it to keep it safe, and then had it accidentally eaten by a hungry, hungry hippo brat. After that point, Shanks decides, uh, why not? Let's go full cosplay and give him my captain's hat as well. It's not something I want to see, but it's also not something that's at all impossible. It's kind of like when you think about the possibility of, you know, Big Mom and Kaido just like, banging. It's it's not at all what you want to think about. Oh God, no. But you simply cannot deny the possibility. Although it does come with a set of problems of its own, namely being why nobody has ever recognized that Luffy's devil fruit abilities once belonged to Roger. The straw hat is one thing because it clearly got passed to Shanks quite early on, but the fruit powers are entirely different. I think it would be significantly harder to answer that question without it feeling incredibly clunky and probably unsatisfying. So in the end, I am very much hoping that if Roger was a fruit user, then it wasn't this one at the very least. And to see some other fruits, I really hope Roger did and have feel free to check out this list of the top 20 worst devil fruits in One Piece. Lots of glorious train wrecks in there, a lot of fun to examine. And similarly, I kind of brought it up before, but the next go-to answer would be the Merimerinomi, which comes entirely from the fact that Ace is Roger's biological son. So an argument could be made for some sort of inherited will aspect there as well. And once again, it's not to be dismissed immediately because Roger and Ace do have these little ties together in the story. One of which can be seen in their bounties, which both feature a double five number. And also going in favor of the Merimerinomi, Merinomi, this devil fruit was found by Ace in East Blue, on the island of Sixes to be precise, which is relevant because Roger obviously died in East Blue. So if he did have a fruit, then it would most likely reincarnate there. Same thing with the Gomu Gomu no Mi. Oh, and fun fact, this was also where we have an example of what happens when two people eat the same devil fruit. Ace shared the Mera Mera no Mi with a character named Mars Juice, but because Ace got in slightly quicker, he got all of the, uh, the powers, and meanwhile Mars Juice, well, uh, he just got a very unsatisfying meal. The same sort of question applies though. Surely someone would have recognized that Ace had the abilities of Roger, and yeah, I suppose maybe they did. It's a bit more plausible in this case because we haven't spent anywhere near as much time with Ace as we have with Luffy, but it would still be a tricky narrative maneuver to pull off. And speaking of tricky, we have another fun anti-fruit question which pops up a lot, and that is, if Roger was a devil fruit user, then why was he bound with wooden shackles for his execution? Surely they would have assigned sea stone cuffs for such a thing, yeah? Well, look, it's, it's not a terrible question, but it's also one that has about a billion different possibilities attached to it. One being that Seastone technology may not have existed at the time. It's been noted that Dr. Vegapunk is the one responsible for pioneering Seastone usage in order to coat marine ships, so perhaps he crafted the cuffs as well. Oh, and on a very lame note, it could also be said that Roger was wearing Seastone cuffs just with a wooden frame around them. I mean, that is exactly how easy it is for Oda to get out of that sort of situation. Here's an even bigger question though. Let's say that Roger definitely isn't a fruit user, let's say that he was just, you know, naturally the strongest man in the world. In that case, what exactly exactly were the wooden stocks going to do to stop him anyway. In the end, whether Roger was a fruit user or not, these restraints are pretty pointless. If he wanted to, he could have escaped, but he didn't, so eh, he didn't. But as for one of the most exciting fruit-based options, we have the potential of Roger using an unknown devil fruit. And one idea that I see quite commonly floated about here and there and everywhere is something to do with weather control, which is also one of the more common and widely speculated thoughts regarding Dragon's devil fruit ability, if indeed he has one. So we have a sort of dominant no effect of speculation happening here, I must admit. But stuff like this comes from the weird weather phenomena attached to the Roger Pirates, with the most famous example being the Battle of Ed War. The Roger Pirates were completely cornered by Golden Lion Shiki. However, they were saved by some sort of miraculous storm that sunk half of Shiki ships and not the Aura Jackson. Although personally, I'm much more inclined to believe that Roger was just loved by fate in the same sort of way that Luffy is. This was not his place to fall. So a strapping young fate stepped in to help old lady Roger cross that busy, busy intersection. But we do also have an East Blue connection at play here as well, because a very young dragon was at Roger's execution, so it would be easy enough for him to inherit such a devil fruit. Although it doesn't make as much sense as either Ace or Luffy. And even then the amount of sense they make is debatable. And I should say there's also a general perception out there that Roger having a devil fruit would somehow ruin his character, oh no. Like many would prefer him to just be a strong dude who conquered the world. Kind of like Garp and 
Shanks. Two non-ability users that have found their way to the top through raw power alone. And I get that sentiment, I really do. However, I am also, unfortunately, old enough to remember a time when this was the general consensus surrounding Whitebeard. Prior to the Marine for Dark, if the idea of Whitebeard having a devil fruit was ever brought up online, it would inevitably met with the exact same resistance as Roger. He's just the strongest man in the world. He's just a powerful dude and he don't need no fruit. Not only that, but Whitebeard also used a weapon. So, oh no, he cannot have a devil fruit power because this was back in the day where it was taken a strict headcanon that swordsmen or weapon specialists could not also be fruit users because every character could only have the one thing that it is they do. And Whitebeard quite gloriously decimated that impression. And I certainly don't think any less of him in retrospect. So as much as it may seem like Roger would be much cooler without a fruit power, I can 100% guarantee you that if Oda did decide to give him one, you would be likely to change that opinion in an instant. Plus, if pure coolness is one of your worries in life, I have some very bad news for you because this goofy mofo is not the cool badass criminal that the world remembers him as. Every new piece of information regarding Roger paints him as much more of a Luffy-like figure than I ever would have expected, and I would be thrilled if he also turned out to be a fruit user because uh, why not? I mean, one reason why not is because it does come with a lot of potential problems attached to it, but so does the alternative, and it's never too late for Oda to implement something like this. And if you'd like to know more about the Roger Pirates, then please do check out this video where Oda names each and every member of the crew. There's about 30 of them, they're all pretty damn wild, and I look forward to seeing you there.